The African savanna is alive with activity. Among the many creatures that call it home is the zebra, a creature whose life revolves around immediate survival. The lion approaches, and in an instant the zebra is in flight, evading sharp teeth and the threat of becoming a meal. Once the danger is past, the zebra returns to its calm grazing state, the stress of the chase a fleeting memory. Unlike zebras, we humans face a different kind of predator, our minds. It's two in the morning, and instead of resting for the challenges of the next day, we're tossing and turning, stressed about an upcoming presentation or an argument with a loved one. While the zebra's stress is immediate and tied to a clear and present danger, ours is complex, often born from our imagination or anticipation of events and future uncertainties. Our unique capability of introspection, foresight and memory, gifts from evolution, double up as a curse when it comes to stress. We get bogged down by worries like traffic, deadlines or social expectations, none of which require immediate physical activity, yet they activate our stress responses just as acutely. In his book, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers, American neuroendocrology researcher Robert Sapolsky writes, If you are that zebra running for your life, or that lion sprinting for your meal, your body's physiological response mechanisms are superbly adapted for dealing with such short-term physical emergencies. For the vast majority of beasts on this planet, stress is about a short-term crisis, after which it's either over with, or you're over with. When we sit around and worry about stressful things, we turn on the same physiological responses, but they are potentially a disaster when provoked chronically. And that's where the zebra and human narratives diverge further. In the constant hustle of modern human life, the alarm rarely switches off. Our brain finds it hard to differentiate between a lion chasing us and an impending deadline. Thus, we're often operating in a heightened state of stress, which indeed comes at a high cost. A large body of evidence suggests that stress-related disease emerges predominantly out of the fact that we so often activate a physiological system that has evolved for responding to acute physical emergencies, but we turn it on for months on end, worrying about mortgages, relationships and promotions. Hungarian-Canadian endocrinologist Hans Saylor put forth the idea of the general adaption syndrome. GAS explains the body's triphase reaction to stress an initial alarm, a period of resistance, and finally, if the stress continues, a stage of exhaustion. Picture the alarm phase as our instinctive, immediate reaction to sudden threats, mirroring the zebra's swift response to a predator. The resistance phase can be likened to us pushing through an especially tough week at the office. But the real concern arises if we remain in this stress state for too long, leading us into the exhaustion phase, where our bodily resources are strained to the limit. Chronic stress can pave the way to diabetes, overburdening our ability to regulate glucose. Psychologically, it mirrors depression, numbing our capacity for joy and pushing us into a realm of helplessness. Sapolsky writes, On an incredibly simplistic level, you can think of depression as occurring when your cortex thinks an abstract thought and manages to convince the rest of the brain that this is as real as a physical stressor. While stress is an evolutionary tool designed to ensure our survival, the very complexities of human life have turned it into a double-edged sword. It falls upon us to master this tool, learning how to harness its power for our benefit rather than our detriment.